Hello everyone, it's Matt here and welcome to the Matt Brick Railroad Works workshop update for May 2021. There's a lot to go through here because I've not been discussing models of late on the channel, uh, so we're going to work through all these in the picture, working from the largest to smallest. First off we have the Brick Train Depot Mikado, and this is built from the instructions with a select few modifications. Um, and there's quite a few, a lot of it is more to do with detail modifications, but there's some pretty big changes that have been made. Um, primarily, and you've probably picked up if you've seen the comparison photo, is the tender. The tender's actually a custom Vanderbilt tender I've designed myself, um, I've actually designed it in Lego uh, Digital Designer. Uh, there's also differences in the control system, so the Loco is actually fitted with an S brick rather than a power functions receiver. The cab is a stud longer, um, and the reason for that is that being a stud longer allows a different cab front, it allows a correct formation of side windows, and it's not a major change, but it is enough to make the Loco, in my mind, look a bit better now that it's got that nice, longer cab. Um, the cab roof, obviously, because the cab itself change has been changed as well, uh, I've made use of possibly pieces that weren't around when the Loco was designed, so the angled pieces for the sides of the roof, um, that's been done as well. Um, the, some of the detail and functional items on top of the boiler um, have been changed slightly. The front has had a modified pilot installed um, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, I've gone to knuckle couplers, so I've had to change out the uh, default magnets for knuckle couplers um, and there's been a few of the slight tweaks and changes uh, because of that and a few other things obviously because the construction is slightly different and um, the front steps are slightly different as is the front headlight and that pretty much concludes all the loco modifications to be honest it's largely detail work rather than actual main structural or functional changes um, with the exception of the s bricks so it just makes it look a little bit different, makes it look a bit, um, you know, special compared to just somebody who just built built the model from the instructions. Because um, as always, I like tinkering. Moving on uh, to the freight cart portion, we have two new Brick Train Depot AAR two bay offset hoppers in dark red. Uh, this has been quite a, a lengthy and expensive uh, procedure building these two hoppers. Um, primarily because dark red is a bit of a hard colour to come by and the reason dark red is a bit hard, of a hard colour to come by is that me being the uh, pedantist that I am wanted to build them using the closed ends uh, modified uh, plate with the bar so that I could have a uniform look to the fleet and that sort of thing so to get all the dark red closed end ones, uh, because it only appeared in sets from 2005, meant going to quite a lot of different Bricklink sellers, um, some of them only having four or five in a go. Um, so I pretty much cleared all the UK sellers who'd got more than four in stock out of those parts. And I eventually had to go to Brick Owl to actually get the final ones uh, to do the second hopper because I'd emptied out all the major Bricklink uh, sellers from their stock and these aren't decaled yet um, there are um, a few changes to the instructions as well um, so the end iron work and structural work has changed slightly um, it's much more akin to what you'd see on the brick model railroad a USRA hopper but it is more accurate uh, in my mind to what the real thing is um, I've been working it off my based off photos of the real thing in different liveries so these not, might not be purely correct for the New York Central um, but they're quite accurate as far as I can make out um, so obviously you've got the two end stanchions which are now uh, completely vertical you've got the cross beam um, on the non step ladder side on the ends um, and obviously the brake wheel, instead of being a vertical one that comes out the top, is actually um, fitted to the end of the uh, hopper. The last uh, thing I want to talk about with the Brick Train Depot AR hoppers is the fact that the bogies themselves have also been changed around. So I've gone to a Brick Model Arrow de bogey, um, primarily because they're broadly similar in terms of visuals, and 
the other reason being is that I the brick model railroad bogies already can be fitted with BMR knuckles um, otherwise I might have to do quite a lot of tinkering to uh, get the knuckles fitted and I'll just sooner if there's a drop-in solution which using the brick model railroad bogies are then it obviously makes life easier for me moving on New York Central hoppers I did mention um, the brick model railroad USRA hopper in when talking about the brick drain depot hopper and the modifications to that and um, this is a modified brick model railroad hopper this is a new york central cement version um, now the cement version is not as drastic a change as you know completely reworking the rule book um, but it is quite different the real uh, things uh, were modified from standard uras array hoppers um, to cope with cement traffic and cement obviously is a very susceptible load um, if it gets damaged by water um, so the solution to that was to use uh, covers over hoppers so originally it would have been like a tarp load or some sort of other cover fitted to a standard hopper um, and then they actually went through to this sort of style of uh, permanent hopper um, where it's actually a Essentially, a standard USRA hopper, they've put in extra sheets in the ends of the hopper because obviously cement is a heavier load than coal. Uh, it's a bit denser as well, so you don't need all that hopper space. So you had new uh, side plates installed, and also you've got the new roof. Um, so capacity is same for the weight is the same, um, but obviously because it's cement, it's a lot more compact and it's um, obviously better. Uh, so obviously this started off life as a modification to the standard um, USRA hopper. Um, so I effectively took a standard coal hopper because um, I'd used it, I'd put a sand or ballast load on. Something a bit different to coal because I don't like black coal in a black hopper. It just doesn't fit right um, in my mind. So I changed it to a coal or a sand load or something and... I kind of wanted to change it back to a coal load because that's what it should have been carrying. So I was just like uh, tinkering with it and and I had a look. I managed to find some sort of PDF about New York Central hoppers from somewhere, and I, I downloaded a copy and I was just like, "This is you know." And then I was reading through it and then it came up to cement hoppers, and I was just like, oh, "That's actually just a modification of the USR one. I can actually do that." So I took uh, the New York Central hopper. I took the uh, fake load out. Um, and started modifying it to fit a roof and I worked out how to fit the roof and how what changes were required and it was, wasn't a lot to be honest um, so I worked out the changes and fitted it to the model so it was lettered up as a standard New York Central coal hopper but with a roof on um, so I just went well if I'm gonna make it a if I'm gonna keep it as a cement hopper I need to change the decals but the problem with that is that if I change the decals, it means ch I, c I can pop it off the sides to change the decals and too much of a problem because I can just keep the sides separate. The problem I've got is that the side numbering won't match the end numbering because obviously I've got to take the end number decals off. But that wastes the end decal, so I don't really want to do that. So what do I do? So I sort of went, well, why don't I just build another hopper? You know, and it's the second New York Central hopper, but it carries cement, not coal, so it's different. Um, and it's a different type of traffic for the railroad. So I took the roof modification partially apart so I could work out what I did. And then with the new hopper I built using the new 2x6 tiles available from the bricks and pieces or replacement bricks uh, service, I then built a second hopper with these new parts um, with the roof on. And then uh, while I was working on that, I'd contacted OK Brickworks to provide the decals and uh, Andy's done a fantastic job once again. So I got the decals and then finished off the modifications and then left it for a bit, um, left it for, I said, half a year to a year. Um, so it's been idling, waiting for completion effectively. And then uh, while in preparation for doing other bits and pieces, I um, actually got around to fitting the decals to it. So the decals have been fitted now um, and I've converted the uh, hopper back to a coal load. So I've actually created a custom coal load for that. Um, and it's just bringing them back into service and back in line to a standard uh, hopper configuration. Um, so I've now got effectively two hoppers for the price of one. Well, well not technically, but uh, you, you get the meaning. 
moving on, because uh, obviously we've done the Loco and the Hoppers, uh, the last item in that picture was actually the Dark Green Gondola. Um, so the Dark Green Gondola's got a bit of a interesting history. Um, I kind of started off with it as a basis of I want to do something custom um, and use uh, the 4x4 modified uh, tile with four studs or modified plate but with only four studs on so I was just like well how what item of rolling stock would this suit and to my mind I'd not got many gondolas I only got the four uh, which I built off the brick model router instruction so I decided to build a gondola um, so I think it works out to be 38 scale feet um, it's not a pure 40 um, so it's a bit of a slightly odd size but it is I think once you can uh, count in the uh, steps and that sort of side, it is 40, 41 ish feet. Um, so it is kind of to scale. Um, and the hopper itself is prone designed to use the, uh, obviously that 4x4 plate. So I had to design it around that. So I was just like, well, I need to keep it mirrored effectively and I need to do some bits about how to do it. So it was primarily just a tinkering exercise in Lego Digital Designer. Um, working out how to get the plate and then obviously the problem you've got with Lego Digital Designer is because it doesn't link in, it doesn't link to a database like Studio does I can't then find out what does and doesn't work in dark green so I then had to kind of work backwards based on the fact that I knew which parts were available from doing other work in dark green um, so I had to work out what was available what wasn't available and then modify to suit so it's broadly what I actually originally designed, but there's been some changes. So for all the primarily change or the primary thing that has changed is um, the lack of tiles in available colours. So um, one by eights don't exist in dark green or if I do the hor horrendously expensive um, and the end two by three tiles don't exist. But you might think to yourself, well, the, there's two by three tiles in the picture. So they've obviously got to exist. Um, these are technically speaking 2x3 tiles from Lego um, but they actually started off life as 2x3 modifier tiles with clips um, so what I did was I ordered three in cut the clips off and used a um, a file to file and sand away the edge of the where the clips would be so it actually brings it in line to the stud grid so it is technically now a 2x3 tile um, but it's slightly um, got a slightly different shaping but as I don't disassemble models generally um, it'll stay on the gondola forever there obviously are decals needed to apply to the gondola um, so I kind of need to work out uh, which railroad I want to letter it for possibly do a custom sort of uh, industry style one um, so maybe make it a private, privately owned gondola not a standard railroad one um, and obviously, being a nice dark green colour, it makes a nice contrast to quite a lot of the sort of brown, black, and um, other boring colours of normal uh, freight stock. So it actually makes quite a nice change to have something that's bright in comparison to all the brown and black. So, um, so that actually concludes the uh, workshop update for May 21. Um, I've got a few more bits in the pipeline, um, but obviously that's depending on time and resources. Um, so that's it for the May workshop update um, if you've got any questions uh, please drop them in the comments below but other than that I'll see you uh, next time so that's it for me and goodbye